Let's jump to the story from NPR. We love NPR, guys. A drone attack on Moscow briefly shut one of its airports and injured one. Take a look at this photo. There was a, a video I played earlier. I don't, we don't have it pulled up right now where it's a guy driving down the highway and he's just filming this destruction on this building. And it is terrifying stuff. They say Russian authorities say three Uca Ukrainian drones attacked Moscow in the early hours on Sunday, injuring one person and prompting a temporary closure for traffic. Of one of the uh, one of four airports around the Russian capital, it was the fourth such attempt at a strike on the capital region this month. Now, I saw some people on Twitter claim this was a secret government uh, uh, office that was protected by Russian security forces. Perhaps that makes sense. I don't know why else they would strike the target. They're they're going to go after military targets. But this is now escalation of warfare into civilian capitals, into Moscow. This is. I think there's we're starting to see um, a real case for this expanding well beyond just a Ukrainian conflict. It's already now in Russia. And where else could it go next as this is spreading? There was a news report that a Russian strike was 600 feet from the Romanian border, which could theoretically launch this thing just dramatically out of control. And is then Romania a NATO country? I don't know about Romania. I don't know. Um, find out. Well, so I will say, so I was at State Department today, and, and Serge, it's not on Gray Zone yet, but you can maybe bring it up on the State Department's uh, YouTube channel. Um, I asked him about this drone strike, and, and Tim, to your point of like... Romania is. As of tomorrow, Romania is in NATO. Uh, oh, really? No, as of 2004. August oh. 1st, 2023? Are you sure? It says 2004, post-Cold War enlargement. It says alphabetical list of oh, NATO yeah, member right. countries, this, and it says Romania 2004. This Maybe this is a typo. That's weird. Oh, no, no. It's saying that as of tomorrow, Romania is a NATO member, but it has been since 04. Sorry to interrupt, Liam. Okay, oh, no, no worries. Um, so, yeah, I asked the State Department about this. And, and to your point of like, did Ukraine do this? I mean, it was fairly obvious. So like an hour after uh, this drone blows up, uh, Zelensky made a statement and he says, quote, gradually the war is returning to the territory of Russia, to its symbolic centers and military bases. And this is an inevitable, natural, and absolutely fair process. So Zelensky said that, and he's explicitly said, we're targeting symbolic centers, um, which to me, I could only mean, you know, areas where civilians gather. So it sounds like we're targeting civilians. And I asked the State Department this, and um, he basically said, well, I don't know if that's what sy symbolic centers means. And then he brushed it off and wouldn't let me get a follow-up in. But um, to me, when you make a speech like that an hour after the explosion happens, that kind of looks like you're taking credit for it. Um, and so it's extremely scary. I mean, and it's crazy that the U S I mean, we keep like, like U S officials keep saying like, well, we don't support attack. We don't support attacks on Russia's border. Well, it's like, well, you keep funding them and arming them to do it. So at what point are you going to like, you know, enforce your, um, lack of support for attacking Russia's border? And, um, you know, I, it, it's just we, scary. We, I mean, this war, keeps we've got U S civilians day. on the ground in Ukraine. And the U.S. providing weapons, which end up in the hands of many of these people. Like, Russia knows full well what's going on. When it comes to this strike on, on Russian targets, Russia's not going, oh, those Ukrainians are at it again. They're saying, NATO just attacked our capital. So this, is, th this seems like the only, path, the only path forward is going to be escalation. Could yeah. be a false flag. Could be Russian drones doing it to Doesn't matter. Either well, way, the same thing happens. It, if it's a false flag, then Russia wants to escalate, and it's even worse. But if it was a false flag, why would Zelensky come out an hour later and basically yeah. be like, hey, we're going after symbolic centers? I guess um, it, it, you'd be like if you were the commander and then some random elements within your country bombed some random elements within the enemy country, you'd be like, see, there you go. American greatness. <laughs> yes, this let is what me we bring do. you back to the era of piracy where there would be privateers and corsairs who would receive letters of mark from their government to disrupt the enemy's supply lines. And then let's say it was the English and the French. The French would capture a pirate ship running black sails or whatever, a black flag. And then these guys are clearly British. They'd go to the crown and say, we know that you are ransacking our trade lines. Like, oh, how dare you? We would never condone piracy. Oh, the, the, oh, I am offended. That's what they do. So what's going on right now? It is the most annoying thing ever when these officers are like, the U.S. is not involved in war. Those are volunteers. I'm like, shut up. It's effectively the same thing. No one's stupid. Like, you can believe whatever you want to believe so that you can sleep at night. But I assure you, Joe Biden, 
Kamala Harris, Millie, whoever it may be, is under no illusion that we are not involved in this. They know exactly what they're funding. Like Vietnam, and Russia is the exact same. In the Vietnam War, it was the Americans versus the Russians, basically. Right. Versus the Russians and the Chinese, maybe. But for some, somehow, we just never came to blows with Russia. We never even talked about it as if it was against Russia. We did. We called it proxy war. Yeah, they were funding the Viet Cong and the North Vietnamese. U.S. Middle Eastern involvement was proxy war against uh, very much so Russia and to a certain Funding degree Chinese the interests. Funding yeah, that was yeah, a Yeah, against the Soviets. Against Soviets. And that's what, that's what Syria is, our support for the rebel groups. It's because Syria would not side with us because they're allied with Russia. So, of course, anyone in government al aligned with Russia, we opposed. See, How convenient. I'm like, did ISIS, was there, were they funded by the Russians? CIA. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you would think if the up. Russians were really our enemies, they would have been funding ISIS. But That's I could why, not remember that no, happening at this all. This is why they were happy when Trump decimated ISIS. When Trump started taking them out, Putin's like, this is good. Yeah. It was good for both. For and then they claimed that the reason Putin didn't invade Ukraine was because Donald Trump was catering to Putin's interests. And I'm like, yeah. Destroying ISIS? Not getting us involved in wars. Wow, it's almost like he was doing with the American people. Yeah, well, and, he, and want he armed Ukraine with a bunch of weapons too. So that's which, true. You know, which is obviously not in Russia's interest. I um, know, what do you say? There was also a tweet on this explosion. This account tweets it out, and they're like, "Oh my God, drones hitting Moscow! How unfortunate!" And then like a little sunglasses emoji, meaning like you know we like this. And then the G general Michael Hayden, who's the former director of the CIA and NSA, tw tweets out, tweets out, "Oh, it's an act of God." Like about this explosion, there's like you can watch the video. There's like this woman who's screaming; she's in terror. It's like a horrible video to watch. And the former um, director of the CIA and NSA is like celebrating this on Twitter. It is it is insane. Of course, um, I I don't. It's like that shark attack where there was the shark attack and people were like happy because some Russian dude got eaten by a shark. Jeez. Oh my gosh! But who has nothing to do with the war? It's like yeah. pe um, people who don't realize that it's the government's perpetrating these wars, and like you know, most of these soldiers are conscripted anyways. It's like. You should be mad at the governments, even if you, um, you know, believe uh, the whole narrative around Ukraine. You should be mad at Putin and the government. You don't don't celebrate like civilians getting bombed in Moscow. What do you don't think celebrate is a, that? What do you think is a just solution to the war? A, a, um, I mean, I, I I think the war could have been avoided in the first place by um, giving up uh, or holding referendums in. Which, by the way, Zelensky campaigned on this. He campaigned on holding referendums in the Donbass and Crimea because there was like a decade long civil war in the Donbass. And of course, Russia basically controls Crimea. And and this civil war was awful. And so and Poroshenko's um, by the end of like by Zelensky, when he was campaigning in 2019, Poroshenko's approval rating was so low because of this war. It was like people didn't people didn't want to fight this war. And and that's why also the Azov Battalion, which is kind of the, the neo-Nazi sect, um, grew you know, so much stronger is because people didn't, the only people who wanted to fight were those guys. But so Zelensky campaigns and he's like, I'm going to hold referendums in the Donbass. I'm going to let them decide whether they want autonomy, whether they want to secede or be in Ukraine. And he wins overwhelmingly. He wins like 75% of the vote. And in the East, everyone voted for him in the, in the general election. Then he gets in and he doesn't do it. He seemed open to it. You can actually look, there's like old, there's like Biden 2021 White House statements where Biden is like, saying like, no, 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 Crimea is Ukraine. We're going to stick to this. And Zelensky earlier had been like, well, I'm still open to referendums there. But then Biden makes gets involved and is like, no, no, Crimea is Ukraine. Um, Boris Johnson was sent in that, and crushed a peace yeah, agreement. Yeah, that was after the war. But so in terms of like a, 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 a peace agreement could have been just hold referendums in the Donbass and Crimea. Crimea overwhelmingly, even by like U.S. government conducted polls in 2014, Crimea overwhelmingly wants to join Russia. The Donbass, it's not clear whether they want to join or secede or want more like just governing autonomy um, from Kiev. Just just hold those referendums and see what happens. That, that was Putin's demand before he invaded. And you could have just granted that. And people say like, well, you can't do that because then he'll just be even closer and he'll keep going. But it's like, take the chance on it then at least. Or, or like negotiate some, I don't know, negotiate something better. But like... We, like the idea that this counterfactual of like, well, Putin would have gone even further. It's like, well, guess what? Like hundreds of thousands have died. Ukraine is destroyed and millions are now refugees because like of that counterfactual that you're so sure of. It's like we could have held these referendums and we and we potentially could have avoided the entire war. And we still I, could. We still could do that now. I think if Donald Trump gets elected the day they call it for Trump, the hour, the minute the war stops. 
Yeah, I mean, I think he would probably do maybe some form of what I just said. I don't know what he's. Exactly no, I just think do, but. the moment they say, and the winner of the twenty twenty four presidential election is projected to be Donald Trump, Russia immediately says ceasefire. And Zelensky too yeah, would be well, like, finally, probably. the dogs are off my back. I can do what I want with my country. Like if Zelensky, maybe I maybe. think some of the dogs on his back are kind of the far right guys within his own uh, within his own government. But though. Putin stops right but away yeah, yeah. because he wants more leverage. So Putin is probably going to be saying Trump's going to come in. He's going to end this. We're not going to get everything we want. We'll get enough of what we want. But if we're still fighting, it's not. We'll gain more leverage by stopping the fighting right now. Then, uh, and then you know, uh, brushing up to, to to Trump's ego and being like, we knew that as soon as you got in, you were going to be reasonable and help us end this conflict. So we pulled our troops back. Trump's going to be like, absolutely. Here's what I expect. It's over. Hundred percent. I mean, I think that's true of not only Trump, but I think that's true of RFK and Vivek as well um agreed um but i i also think like trump winning is just a massive fantasy i mean i think um we i i can't recite like the whole history i know i know a couple interesting facts about the whole jfk assassination and to me it's overwhelming that the cia killed him so you know donald trump won in 2016 well he won and then you know um the intelligence agencies um well i guess Hillary and, and her team fabricated the dossier and then um, this kind of... They, they tied stones to Trump's feet. E exactly. And, and, but but if you, if you think, do you really think he's going to be allowed in with like the stated goal of like getting revenge at the deep state? Or do you think they might allowed. just pull the trigger at some point? Well, I don't know about any of that. I mean, RFK's talked about the risk, you know, based on his family history. So perhaps, and there's been other people who have speculated horrifying things may happen, but... Uh, Look, if 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 I believe that if Donald Trump is harmed, this country implodes overnight. I mean, it it's it's chaos beyond chaos. If something happens to Trump in that in that capacity, not an option. Well, I think what's why, terrifying about that is, you take is a the look left at, would believe it. The left would be like, yeah, yeah people a, hate a, Trump. A, no, 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 but that's why it's, that's why you're so correct. Is like the left would believe it. They'd be like, yeah, everyone hates Trump. Of course, someone would assassinate him. But the right is going to be like, no, was he was. He, yeah, exactly. And then it doesn't matter. You're what right, happens. that's going to cause chaos. So you, you have to ask yourself why the why the United States has not, say, assassinated Julian Assange when Hillary Clinton reported said, can't we just drone this guy? And they're like, yeah, he's in London. Right. Why? Certain people they got no problem with. Maybe it's a 16 year old American citizen. Barack Obama's like, we're going to blow him up because his dad's a terrorist. So they killed Abdul Rahman al alaki in a civilian restaurant in a country we're not at war with. Trump killed his son, though, too. Trump killed or his uh, his daughter, his daughter. Now, see, hypothetically, I don't know that that I. That is a claim made by the family, whereas the drone strike on a civilian restaurant is confirmed by the U.S. Okay. government. And another thing, it's, it's one thing to catch a round in a him. gunfight, and it's another thing to have someone shoot a missile at <laughs> like the, the, the daughter. But, but, but investigate Trump. Yeah, fine. I don't care. I, I, if, if this is collateral damage and an American girl died, he's responsible for that. Yeah. Presidents shouldn't be allowed to get away with this stuff, especially when it, we're not at war with this country. But, mm -hmm. uh, but fair point. Right. You know. Barack Obama was like, blow him up. Whoops. Yeah. He, I mean, Barack Obama had his actual kill list, like list of people. But they claim they were targeting know. a different guy and he was an act. It was a, whoops, we got the wrong guy. But, you know. Convenient whoops. But yeah, yeah. You know, so I don't, I think if something happens to Donald Trump, this country gets ripped apart in two seconds. And the reason why they don't go after people like Julian Assange is because they don't want to make martyrs. You, you will make that man immortal and only in his best features. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like there'll be some behind the scenes shenanigans to keep him out of office before an assassination for that same reason. He's too powerful, like, metaphorically. For the, I, for the I, I agree with that. I'm just saying if there's a chance he's going to get into office, they'll, they'll I, I, pull it's plan not B. Just, what, I, what I find fascinating I think, um, is that Roseanne says there's not going to be an election. And I had to ask her to clarify, because Michael Mal said, of course there will be. But I think it's probably a mix of the two perspectives. There will be an election, but no one will care. No one will accept it. No one. You think 2020 was bad? 2024 is going to be, it's just going to be nuts. It's going to be bad. Because now, after 2020, you're going to have every single Trump supporter filming everything. You are going to have a hundred times as many videos coming out showing weird things that may be innocuous, maybe nothing, or may be suspicious. And no matter who wins or who loses, the other side will refuse. We saw the Boston Globe story where powerful Democrats suggested the West Coast secede from the union in the event, in the event Donald Trump gets elected. That's how crazy they are. Now, what do you think happens if Trump loses again? 
This time, there's going to be people everywhere filming literally everything. I thought 2020 was going to be more chaotic than it was. Maybe I'm wrong about 2024, but I just don't see anyone accepting the results. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out and we'll see you all next time.